Scripture text, that's very interesting to me. John 17, verses 20 and 21. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Passage from John 17. I would invite you to read that entire chapter uh, at your leisure. Why our unity is so important and beautiful to God. Why our unity is so important and beautiful to God. The night before Jesus died, he prayed that his disciples would be one. question is, why was the unity of his followers so on his heart? While in college, I majored in theology, but painting, I mean on the walls, painting, was one of my passions. And I still enjoy painting. I love color. I love seeing dark, dingy places transformed into vibrant, scintillating spaces, hiding the dingy, worn surfaces that were displayed before. I like colors like Pathalo blue, Cadium yellow, Alzerin crimson, Yellow Asha. I didn't get an amen on any of those. I like them by themselves, but they are a hundred times more beautiful when mixed together and set next to each other in a thousand surprising combinations. What makes a piece of art beautiful is the harmony and the relationships of the images, the shapes, the colors. A canvas that is all one color is very boring. Can you say amen? Arthur Steve DeWitt, in eyes wide open, wrote, enjoying God, eyes wide open, enjoying God in everything. In this book, he says that the amazing diversity in unity that we see in the creation points us to God. A stunning sunset. How many of you 
been watching the sunsets lately. That's my daily affair. My wife just gets so mad at me because she knows that one hour before sundown, I'm gone. I'm usually down on the beach looking west to see the sunset and to see gray clouds that are there and then the sun go down behind them, all the brilliant colors that come out of those sunsets. The glories of the Grand Canyon, the beauty of sunlight in the forest, the thousands of combinations of color and light and shape in nature, a symphony orchestra of a sports team that's working harmoniously together. All the variations of diversity and harmony we see in the world point us to God. Especially when we enjoy harmonious relationships. And some of us don't like harmonious relationships. I remember when I was a little boy, I lived in Sandy, North Carolina, East Coast. Grover Whitehead, a little boy in our neighborhood, the meanest little thing I ever saw in my life. And he would always get ready to do something mean. He'd reach down in the sand and throw up the sand. And while you were getting the sand out of your eyes, he'd grab everything and run off. We enjoy holidays, don't we? Holidays, they're times of the coming together of families. Weddings and anniversaries, they're celebrations of the union of marriage. The 4th of July parades, the unity of our community, of our nation. Coming together feels great. Relational unity is humanity at its supreme and highest ideal. I love it. Well, I come to church on Sabbath morning and we've not seen one another all week. And then we get through with our worship service. We get through with the Sabbath school and Ewald is standing back there by the door. Why don't they just get out of here? No, we're just so glad to see one another. We enjoy that sense of unity and togetherness. Can you say amen? Have you ever wondered why the greatest memories of our lives are not things we bought or sights we saw or food we ate. Think about your greatest memories. They probably have something to do with times of closeness. Closeness with a parent. Closeness with a child. Closeness with a spouse or a friend. Relational unity is beautiful because all of the experiential harmonies of the world whisper of the wondrous beauty of the Godhead's relational threeness and oneness. The experiential harmonies of this world whisper of the wondrous beauty of the Godhead's relational threeness and oneness. All of the relational diversity and harmony that we see on earth in nature, in music, 
in sports, in art, in family relationships. They all point us to the love and the harmony of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons in one God. That's why it's so important for us to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. This is what Paul says in Ephesians 4, verse 3. That's why we should seek to be reconciled to one another and to work out our differences as quickly as possible. That's why we ought to forgive one another and bear with one another. Because our unity in diversity, in our families, and in our churches, reflects and points to God. And so I ask today, do you have strained relationships with fellow believers? If so, what can you do to promote love? and unity in that relationship? Are you unreconciled with anyone? What can you do to seek reconciliation? I know that relationships, even among Christians, can be messy. Amen. We often sin against one another and hurt each other. We have misunderstanding and we have offenses. But as much as it is up to us, we should forgive, love, and pursue the unity of the Spirit with every one of our brothers and sisters. Remember that when we love one another, it is a reflection of the beautiful love of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit for one another and for us. My prayer today is, oh Lord, God, grant us unity. Grant us love and harmony in our families and in our churches. One observant songwriter caught the vision of this much sought after unity. And after pondering it, he penned the words of this song that all of us have heard. And I hope it will ring in our hearts as we leave here today. Bind us together. Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together. Yes, bind us together. Bind us together with love. May that be the experience of each one of us, I pray. Father, unity is a concept. Give us the courage to venture out into unity that we can learn to love and be united with those that love you and us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.